वाले बाबू वेलकम्स यू शॉर्ट हैंड डिक्टेशन इन मेल एंड फीमेल वॉइस फ्रॉम ऑल सोर्सेस लाइक मैगजीन्स स्पीचेस एंड एडिटोरियल्स एट वेरियस स्पीड्स अप टू वन ट्वेंटी डब्ल्यू पी एम फॉर वेरियस डिपार्टमेंट्स लाइक एस एस सी डी एस एस बी सी आर पी एफ दिल्ली पुलिस एक्सेट्रा प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब द चैनल थैंक यू ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर वन हंड्रेड when i take part in the discussion first of all i wish to point out that the sarkaria commission was not given a free hand to examine the developments which had taken place in the last 40 years in india the main important point is the terms of reference by the terms of reference certain parameters had been fixed within those parameters the sarkaria commission has submitted its report there are more than 200 recommendations due to lack of time it is not possible to deal largely with all these recommendations but at the same time the commission has tried to find out the past history of india the commission has said that too much centralization was objected to from the mauryan period to the mughal period the commission has stated the fact similarly under the british rule also centralization was actually objected to by the people by the states the founding fathers of our constitution were painfully conscious that the feeling of indian nationhood was still in the making and required to be carefully nurtured they therefore built a constitutional structure with a powerful central government envisaging the emergence of an indivisible and integrated india the concept of a strong center which is necessary to meet india's immediate needs was virtually in the later period converted into the concept of a unitary state with priority for the center in all cases this was the basis of the process of excessive centralism with all powers in the hands of the center india is developing on the path of capitalism especially monopoly capitalism when monopoly capitalism develops in a country it is then natural that the general argument will be for centralization of the powers in the hands of the central government because they want to protect the interests of the monopoly capitalists and also help the capitalists so that is the natural argument this argument has been there for the last so many years but over centralization has taken place and we know that it has taken place what is the result now many are talking about the unity of the country about the integrity of the country but what has happened in the states communal forces have grown divisive forces have grown and the integrity of the country has been jeopardized when the powers were vested in the hands of the center why has the center failed the khalistan movement is there and there are other movements also secessionists movements now some people are demanding a jharkhand state and then there is a demand for an 
Uttarakhand state. These are all developing. There was a similar demand in Darjeeling, but fortunately that has been solved now. But other fissiparous tendencies are growing and the center has not been able to control them. The center has not been able to prevent them. But they think that only for the center and not for the states that the unity of the people has to be maintained. The question of center-state relations in India is not a question concerned only with the implementation of federal principles or with preventing the violation of those principles or suggesting a few constitutional amendments but it is concerned with the question of maintaining Indian unity, maintaining and consolidating the sense of Indianness or Indian oneness among all the constituents of the Indian Union with the center as the expression of that unity. But for maintaining that unity which has enabled us to compel the British to quit. The constituent units have not received any reward in the integration of the units because the constituent units consisted of big territories, each with its own language and heritage. And in these huge linguistic national units, their linguistic identity and sense of unity grew side by side with the identity of the union. So, a deep thought has to be bestowed on how to maintain the unity with the support of the people, with the support of the states. But that is not the concern of the central government. The Sarkaria Commission has been able to make certain recommendations within certain parameters. Even within those parameters, two recommendations are there. One is that it is neither advisable nor necessary to make any drastic change in the basic character of the constitution. The second is the that the electoral system can be continued like this. In the second recommendation, the commission says that it certainly calls for improvement and reform in a number of aspects. The actual working of the constitution leaves much to be desired. It has said about the changes proposed in the financial aspects of the Indian Union and the states. The arrangements are far from being satisfactory. It has said about the role of the governors, reservation of state bills for consideration of the president, use of extraordinary powers, etc., etc. The commission has said about the intergovernmental council with a comprehensive size. It has said about a National Economic Development Council having a nexus with the Planning Commission, limitation of the centrally sponsored schemes, state finance and planning, etc., etc. Thank you.